Welcome back to Street uh, continuing on with the stub shaft second part. It's just a little stop kind of video. Sorry for me, it's the next day. Um, what we want to do is try converting this over to something else. So this time I'll we'll look at Shigley here. I mean uh, Arlo. We've got this diagram here, figure twelve. You can see here it's threaded in front. Uh, this is quite common. Uh, same up here in 11. Um, he's got this nice, interesting idea here. Uh, so, for example, here it looks like a washer in both situations uh, with a some sort of walking ring or something like this. Um, what he's also implying here, this M label, what's going on here, some sort of lock or, or ring or something. Where is M? Talks about it somewhere. So suddenly I lost M. Where is it? M. So there's a tab sometimes on lock washers. Let's see what the master car can do for us. Also, well, before we get started here, he talks a bit about how the threads are usually a little bit lower than the hub uh, pad cylinder, the surface under the hub. You want it to be, you don't want to rub the hub across the threads as you go past. So we're going to try doing this a little smaller. He has some formulas here. Uh, so for example, he goes through how to compare D uh, to this D thread and comes up with, if we start with 60 and so on and so forth, we usually end up with a slightly lower value, in this case 55, 58. So what we're going to do instead is just go down from 20 to the next available size. So let's do that. So first though, let's save as essentially. Save as, we'll call this one uh, threaded. And just put it in the same spot. Make sure we've got the right one. There we go, close the data panel. Now, a bunch of stuff is gonna happen here. I'm gonna try and do this fairly quickly. Uh, so it's not too complicated. One thing to do is get rid of, uh, we could get rid of this ring. Now, uh, if we click it, let's see what happens. Here's our ring. What if we just try deleting that? Keep an eye on the history. Uh, I've pressed delete. I want to delete both the group and its contents. Say okay. It's gonna give me a warning here. I'm gonna delete and modify some timeline features. Sure, you can always undo here. Did it work? Oh, we've got a sketch problem here. Uh, right, we're using that ring to drive that sketch. We can see again here, we've lost some stuff. Right, so we're not, there's nothing to point at here. It's lost the pointing. That's what the yellow is here. So what we could do, it's a little, just undoing here. Could actually just leave the ring if we want uh, to make a point here. So let's just hide it. Let's see what that does. Next, let's use the part to drive the, the spec again. So let's go ahead here and go to McMaster. Um, I've done a little bit of hunting around on McMaster already here to get ready. Uh, they call this a bearing retaining nut. So it's it's not only for bearings. Uh, if you read their uh, description here, um, they can be used to position and uh, keep things in place, including all sorts of hubs and all the rest. Uh, they do tend to come with, and this is interesting, an optional washer. They're not that expensive. Let's go for the Jamford. Uh, it kind of has a better uh, washer setup. Let's see what they say here. Nope. Not useful. Those are just uh, something else. So I'm going to go for chamfered. See what size we can get here. Metric. There we go. We've got M20, which is our shaft size. 
We've got an M18. And we've also got this optional washer. So let's open this one up. Let's see if the M18 works for us. I'm going to take a little screenshot here of this number so I can find it later. And let's just have a look at the product detail here. Okay, so the chamfer is towards the bearing, or the hub in this case. And we've got the washer trapped in between. That's fine. It's either German or Chinese, whatever. <laughs> and let's have a go at that. So we'll place that. It's M18 by, I'm just going to try and save this as well. It's an M18 by one and a half. So I'll put that into somewhere. Uh, let's download that. Maybe. Here we go. Uh, it's quite big. It's not bad. Let's see how that goes. Uh, I'm actually just going to leave it there. So that's fine. Now let's just, I'm going slightly off screen here. I'm just going to have a look at what I got for the optional thing here. I have to trigger that. There we go. Getting the part number for the optional ring. Let's have a look at that. Interesting. It's like a sorry, never where white hair's got a little tab. Let's try downloading that. See what we get. This seems to match ID's 18 for M18s, so good. Let's have a go. So I got load that. Interesting. I'm going to actually place this first. So let's hide the ring and place the washer. It has to go between the hub and the washer and the rings and the nut. Hello. Let's do a joint for that. And I want it to be right up against this, but there's an easy ring. Hmm. Interesting. No, it's facing the wrong way. It's running into the key. Can we do it that way? It's right. No, it's at the wrong orientation. Let's go for 180. So we can rotate that. You can see here, I think it's missing the keyway. It's actually right on the keyway. Nice. That's good. It's a little tight on this, so we're going to have to adjust that, but let's say okay to that. Top. Next. Let's turn our ring back on. Now we had the chamfer pointing in again from that diagram so let's try that it's looking good it's nicely aligned so far we might be able to move this if we want so let's do a little preliminary move to line up the threads later so then we'll be able to look at 146 strange number let's go the other way you can see the threads shifting here i'm just going to give it some sort of manageable like 60 there we go so we'll be able to find this later if you want to make it easily find we'll make it a strange number nice this is obviously not the right length so what's control in the shaft length out there let's have a look there's that sketch from the last video we had this shaft profile let's show our dimensions excuse me this is great because we can actually shift the sketch without having to go back in the history. Our tree here is a disaster right now. Don't hold me to this. But we can go back and fix this later. But for now, let's just have a look here. Let's control this. Oh, this length. Let's try changing this. This is, this looks like it's controlled by this measurement. If I remember right, let's try 35. 
might get some problems with fixes as we go 38. It's not bad. Got an error in a sketch here. Lateral key cuts, we'll fix that later. Not really moving very much, so hopefully it's okay. Length is good, I think. Now let's hide, just keep on kind of trucking here. We'll go back and fix things later. So I'm just gonna hide those last two components. I'm gonna thread this. So let's do what we can remember. So uh, thread. I think it was 18 by one and a half. Let's model that to have a look. So what's going on here? It's probably this little neck here is not deep enough. Let's leave it unmodeled for now. And we can see what the problem is here, right? So it's shrinking it down for us, but it's not doing what we want. So that's not great. So let's fix this up first before we get carried away. So the shaft we have to fix this shaft that diagram. Let's go down to 18 and sort some stuff out. Um, there's a bunch of things we can do here, and we're probably going to get forced into doing some stuff here. Let's lateral key cuts. Shaft profiles where we're going to start. So a little fix up. Temptation is to start trying to shift all this stuff around. I am going to resist that as much as I can. And instead, let's see if we can figure out how to uh, get this sorted out. We need to get 18, so let's just put 18 in here somewhere. going to turn that to construction. I don't want to actually lose that little piece of information, so let's just rebuild this from this end. I can make these parallel. And I can make the ends, for example, just constrain them horizontally. Nope, can't get that one there, so let's click away. Click and hold. Sketch point. Point. Nice. Now we do need to go under here at least. So again, this is gonna be quite fiddly. Let's finish the sketch. We shouldn't do anything. There's that revolve that makes the shaft. I'm gonna unselect this little tab. We get rid of the kit, the ring groove here. And it still looks okay. We're gonna have some problems here with this sketch later. So now I can actually go into that sketch. And again, it's tempting to get rid of it, but why not just make it a construction? Now we end up with remnants, that's okay. Next day is line. So I now have a profile I can use. A couple. So the question is where let's put this guy. And do we want a sharp edge here? It's gonna gouge the hub as we go along, so probably not. So again, parallel. Let's use the one we already used. And if we wanted, we can make it equal, but we could also just measure this one out. It looks like it's going to be quite tight here. So let's go for a dimension. Point 0.5. It's probably not bad. Keep in mind, we do need to have a little neck here as well.
this is 1.3 before. Um, it's kind of arbitrary. Let's go for a millimeter square. And we can adjust this later if we wish. And what we're after now is where are we compared to, for example, this shoulder again. This is never going to work. Um, it, there's a bit of argument about this sort of stuff. This hub is it's kind of lying on this cylindrical surface, but it's not really uh, getting a lot of strength from it. The tightness of the fit is probably not enough to. It's not a, like it's not an interference fit in any way. If we make this 27, we actually have this sticking out a bit. Again, uh, uh, your local machinist might start kind of start shouting at me here. Whatever they say, that's what you do. But for now, let's go for a little bit of overlap. So this is sticking out slightly. What I'm more worried about is eventually this threaded surface needs to be has to have enough to clamp up against this surface. I know there's a nut uh, washer in here, but we will be keeping an eye on this. So we might come back to this sketch. We've got this chamfer, a notch from the end of the thread and a chamfer at the end. Finish the sketch. Nothing happens until we adjust the... Again, you might have to press control or command to get rid of the preview. No, we're not looking too bad now. So we now have, hopefully, the ability to do the thread. So we know what's wrong with this fillet, for example. So we've got, I think it was that 16th, no. Yeah, the 16th, I think. Let's just put our new groove to that. Nice. Fixes our fillet. Let's have a look at the sketch. It's again the lost projections. Ah, that's what's going on. So let's just, oh, there's lots too, nice. So let's just go through them one at a time. Five, let's redo that one to there. Where is that guy? He's going to make me do them all. Okay. Can't see it. Let's go to a different view here. Wireframe, go around. Uh, wireframe. Looking for a through view. Sketch fixes up. Go back to our standard view. And finish the sketch. Not bad. Let's show those two parts we've placed. That's good. So maybe all we need to do now is thread that guy. Um, it's up to you how you thread it. 
Uh, I'm going to thread it before we place because then we can use that to get the joints correct. So let's step back to and now one more. So we're going to thread. Uh, the surface we're after is that guy, 18 by 1.5. Let's model it so we can see it. See, okay. Let's look at our whole history. So, this is just a very picky thing, this last uh, joint could be a little bit more aligned, so let's just move around. It's up to you how, where, and all the rest of it you want to go. Looks like 190 is going to do it. There we go. We do have some extra stuff in there. Uh, the sketches, for example, have some remnants left behind. It's maybe not such a big deal. Uh, for this video, we'll just leave it as that. But that's how we would maybe convert uh, our part over uh, from a ring groove in a ring to a uh, threaded uh, retaining knot with a sprung or a springing walk washer. Uh, as per McMaster car. So this is one way to go at it. Uh, keep in mind the sketches are still available so you could go in here and fix these up and do all the usual sort of stuff. But for now, let's finish there. Thanks for watching. Uh, the plan is for the next video to go over to the guided, uh, which will reinforce some good habits for shaft design uh, or shaft specification specificationing. Uh, and how that's going to affect uh, things like hubs, placement, and all the rest. Anyway, uh, over to you.